also, this conference is, is going to be on YouTube. Just look for Rocky Mountain Smiths on YouTube, and you'll find this conference as well as some old ones. And there'll be more as time goes on. More old ones. Uh, everybody can see this the tape of this conference. Evan has the red iron in the hat. for lunch? Already? All right. So I, I have something that's close enough to work with. And what I'm, the most important thing I have, um, has to be right, is the location of the hole. And so I have that hole exactly where it needs to be on the frame, and then I can tweak the scroll a little bit to um, make it look good. And it looks like I need to open it up a little right there. So I have these uh, very exotic American-made Well, I don't know if sure I'd go that far on me, but and uh, let's see, what am I trying to do here? Yeah. One of the other nice things about iron is how soft it is. All right. Well, I think we should go to lunch right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this is, let me put this where the camera can see it. But. I don't know if you can see, but it, the holes, there's the hole lined up. So I'm, I'm within a sixteenth of an inch of lining up everywhere because everything was the right length to curl up into the right space. Um, uh, so there's the hole in the frame. There's the hole in the I don't know if you can focus in. Can you zoom in on that? Here, let me put my shoe in the picture so you can't barely tell what's happening. You can't zoom? I mean, I have to hold it up like this? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, you can see that it's uh, it's very close. So it's it's certainly uh, I wouldn't bother fussing with it anymore, even if it had my name on it. <laughs> so you can get the same results if you're working from a drawing. Yeah, you don't. This this process works from the drawing, same as it does from the object. All right. So I made a solemn promise that I would do the leaf when you came back from lunch, so or back. So let's do that. And um, so so far I have focused on the curve of the core, and I haven't bothered to look at the leaf at all. 
uh, and that's, that's the proper sequence. We want to do the core first and then the leaf. And so because the core is heavier, I can make a fast heat now and get the leaf hot without heating up the core much at all. This is starting to rain here. Well, didn't work like I planned, but anyway, here we're the best way to do this. I'm just going to peel the leaf open. Till I get it to follow a nice curve. Peel it out, and then I'm going to give it a quarter twist, and that's done. It's a very easy form. All right, so that's that. So cur curl it out and give it a quarter twist. Uh, okay, we'll put this aside. So, I'm going to start, boy, this is like Vesuvius over here. I'm going to start uh, prepping the stock for this, this pass-through element. So, while I'm doing that, maybe someone would like to do the length calculation. Maybe someone wouldn't. All right, so, so here's what we need. Well, in fact, we could draw this out this way. Let's do it this way. That'll just make it maybe easier to visualize what we're measuring, okay? So we need, we're going to, as our reference point, we're going to use the point at which the two come together. And then from there to the hole, and then from the hole to here. And same thing with this one, this goes from rectangular to round. So we want uh, how much from here to there. And so we're going to have we're going to have one, two, Yes, 
I'm sorry? Transition from witness to round is number four. Uh, the transition is in here. Right. And so I, yeah, you can have this too. If you want. Okay. Yeah, is that everything we need? You can use any unit. You can make that, set the dividers for a smaller unit if you want. Okay. Whatever, you, whatever you want. We have chairs. We have uh, refreshments. <laughs> All right. Peter, on the uh, original pieces that you patterned that off of, is that, was, did they have the center point the box? No. I don't know how they did it. Okay. Were those original painted, or were they left up? I don't know. I think they were painted. Uh, the ones, there are a few that show up in paintings from the period. These were expensive things, so, and only wealthy people had paintings made. But often, there's a portrait of someone standing next to one of these things. Uh, and then there's usually a window behind them. You can see their great estate out the window. You know, but. So th in the paintings, they're often painted and parts are often gilded. So they... they I'm just curious, the ones that you copied? They've all been stripped. The originals have been stripped. Okay. And Williamsburg, so I have no idea what they look like originally. Uh, <laughs> probably, yeah, but they, they should have stopped at one layer before they did, yeah. but they, they did a lot of stuff at Williamsburg in the 1940s and 50s that would never be done now. So standards for restoration keep improving. And, um, Well, I'm trying to think of a good parallel, but you know, it, it, in, ni in the 1920s, it was perfectly acceptable to take an old house, and if if the if uh, one of the roof rafters was starting to sag a little, you take that out completely, and cut a brand new rafter, and put in, throw the old one away, and could we fix that? Now it's better than new, you know, that kind of attitude was uh, really common, in and um, there was no sense of trying to save every last little bit of the original, because one day you need to, you need to study it. So they did, unfortunately, they did a lot of stuff in the name of preservation that didn't, didn't do well in the long run. Yeah, there will be better ways. Yeah. Not may, there will be. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Yeah, so the standards for archaeology in the 1920s, uh, well, even when Williamsburg was being restored in its heyday in the 1930s, you know, the, within, within a year, the archaeologists were turning up so much stuff that uh, they made a rule a policy. We can only save two shoeboxes worth of stuff from every site from now on. So everything else went to the landfill. And well, they had, you know, 300 properties. They had nowhere to put all the stuff and no way to study it. And they just threw up their hands. So, and, and that, I don't think that was a great decision in the long run, but. They seemed to think it was re even saving two shoeboxes was better than everyone else was doing. So, yeah, yeah I know it's hindsight is. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, get my stock drawn out. This fire is, um, fire 
lives, uh, the intelligence of this fire is improving with age, and it's starting to decide it doesn't want to do what I tell it to do. It wants to do what it wants to do. That could get passed around. So here is uh, um, working with, with iron, it's really important when you're going from square to round. You're going from square to round, try to make a perfect octagon in the transition. Don't, don't uh, go from square to slightly lumpy to round. Go, make a really crisp octagon. Well, I don't know if you can see those Could you facets. The from square? I'm sorry? Could you address the reason to go? Well, um, so I'm trying to make a round, a long round here from a rectangular bar. With iron, and even with steel, but especially with iron, if you uh, take that rectangular bar and start rolling it and say, well, eventually it'll get down to size, uh, it will tear apart the grain before you get very far at all. And so it'll start to split apart. 
So drawing it down as a square, or even drawing it down as a smaller rectangle first and then square, means you're working for perfectly flat, uh, you know, squared surfaces, and that keeps packing without, ke it keeps reducing without the stuff shearing through its core, through its cross section. So you can, working it this way generally doesn't cause a problem, working it this way does. Or you tip it up on its side and start flattening, you're getting this not just a reduction in size. So, usually just um, paying very close attention to your technique is, will, will allow you to work wrought iron with very little problem. But I have to say that I rarely see people nowadays taught proper technique when they learn because you can get away with a lot of crap with mild steel and so people learn what they can get away with i you know uh, well i'm not not this group in necessarily in particular but i watch a lot of people drawing stuff under a power hammer and um, they want to make this round they, they have a rectangle, they just roll it right from this. And it eventually gets to size and shape, and if it's mild steel, you may cause some fissures internally, but it's not going to cause a failure in a coat hook. But if you're working with wrought iron, it'll fail dramatically before you get a third of the way through. Um, and it's just bad practice structurally. You know, even Clifton Ralph was adamant about how uh, steps in which you forge things to avoid internal uh, cracking and pipe and, and uh, even on, even with steel under a flat die hammer he would never skip one of those steps yeah. so it, it gives you the best structural results <coughs> with steel and and with iron it gives you uh, success instead of failure. All right, you want to write those the magic numbers up there? So So I'm, I know I'm doing what a lot of people say is impossible. I'm working iron down to a black heat, even, even when it's round. But if it was a really good octagon before I do this step, there's almost no change necessary to make it round. And so I got a nice clean surface round. All right, what do I need? So, that can't be. What's your unit? Uh, I was working in half inches. Okay, so. All right, well let's say that's, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Well, I got five. Six and a half. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Good. Good. Six and a half. Oh, I was looking at my number, not yours. Well, yeah, that number three is six and a half. Yeah. 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 See, I, I, you're, you're right. I'm wrong. <laughs> Do you add those two together? Subtract three. All right. So let's see what I've got. We have. Um, Six and a half plus I need some for the snub, so I might have enough almost. Here. Let's say we need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Yeah, so I need, let's do a little more. Well, everything, this, this entire thing has to go through a round hole before it gets made. So I just want to make sure it all goes through the hole. There's a There's another good reason for um, going from square to octagon to round. Um, which is you can uh, You can still make an easy correction in the octagonal shape
got this one way too small, but we'll keep at it. We'll keep with it anyway. All right, so I've got uh, this piece, four inches from the snub is the hole. So I'll do that. And this piece I've got two and a quarter plus something. Two and a quarter plus. Doing too many things at once? The answer should be yes. <laughs> so I'm going to use that same scribe method to punch this hole, locate the hole. to come out on center. I really need a drift for this one. Two and a quarter plus, we're going to want a hunk. This is pretty good iron, the stuff that I brought with me. See, it takes three or four bins to, to break off. The, the worse the iron, the fewer number of cycles before it breaks. A lot of that um, globe iron works. Iron is, uh, is hot short and it, it will break on the first, the first bend and the there's a, a lot of iron being sold from the Globe grain elevators in Wisconsin. It's
Well. I just did a big screw up, but got a little too thin. The last time I made one of these elements, uh, it ended up twice as heavy as I wanted, so I've been overcompensating this time. <laughs> and everything, everything's coming out too thin. Okay. And we have to All right, so here's the um prepped piece. I've got enough rat tail and the transitions to rectangular. And I have enough to get to the weld plus to make enough tail to weld on to this piece. So again, what do I need there? I need three and five eighths plus three is six and a half. Six and a half from the hole. Uh, let's let me use the hammer for a second. Uh, I guess it's going to have to be. Yeah. Uh, you want me before 12, or yeah. can I stop actually, right at 12? It actually, the schedule says 11.45. I misread it myself. I thought it was noted. I could plead ignorance. <laughs> My fault. Give me, well, five more minutes. I'll, I'll. All right, so we want six and a half. from the hole.
if I, if I get to do something I think is noteworthy, I'll tell you what I'm doing. But most of this is just prepping. So one of the things that, um, that I think is critical to doing work like this is that your priorities shift as you get partway through each piece. So when we started out and when you did the layout, every part of this design was important. We tried to get everything the right size, everything the right location. So now that I have a forging done and I have a hole punched, the hole becomes the, the most important detail on this. If this part of the scroll is too small or too large, it doesn't matter. As long as the hole ends up in the right location for the other one to pass through it. So whatever faults I find in this scroll don't matter at this point because they're beyond anything that has to fit together. It's got to be a good scroll, but it doesn't have to be the right size. It's nice if it is. And, and so a lot of this becomes an exercise in re, reprioritizing. So I'm just going to get this to the point where it's, we'll be able to see what's happening. All right, I'm going to have to mess with this later. But All right, I'll mess with this later. So I've got this. good at visualizing, aren't we? Let's just visualize this as the correct <laughs> shape. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we'll we'll put it in the magic slack tub at lunchtime. Yeah, that's what I figured. All right, and then we can uh, feed this through, bend it so that it catches up with it catches up with the tail of the scroll, weld them together here, and then this as a unit can get welded into this. So I'll do that. I'll keep going on this. Maybe I can put around with it later today or this evening, but I'll get this all ready to uh, weld together and finish this whole element before by the end of the day tomorrow sometime. <laughs> How's that for definite? <laughs> well, I don't need to because it, it goes in far enough. I, I took the reamer to it first. So this is, but I think, but that's enough. All right, so any questions about this part of it? Then, of course, after I get this welded on, then I can shape the end of this and scroll it. So it's got to be prepped so that it'll go through the hole first, and then I could make this end whatever I want, big enough that it can't come back out of the hole. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna S bend it. I, I don't know that I'll do it while it's inserted, but I have to get it the S bend. Maybe S bend first. So I want, I want everything like finished up to there before I weld this together. Because it's hard to, it's hard to adjust this these curves after they're stuck together there. All right. Sorry, it's running late, but any questions other than that? So we'll keep, I'll keep going on this. On, um, I have another session on um, Saturday, and I can do uh, the water leaf. I can do the mounting bracket tab. Uh, those, or if anyone's got, oh, upset corner. That'll fill that slot. Boy, I thought I heard. You. Thank you, thank you. So I'll try to have this element finished before the the big night.